Today we're reading Cornelius Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, Book 1, Chapter 3. And today we're getting into the four elements. So, the first part of this video, I'm just going to jump right into the reading. And then, after that, we will open up for commentary. So, once again, this is Three Books of Occult Philosophy, Book 1, Chapter 3. Of the four elements, their qualities and mutual mixtures. There are four elements and original grounds of all corporeal things. Fire, earth, water, air. Of which all elementated inferior bodies are compounded. Not by way of heaping them up together, but by transmutation and union. And when they are destroyed, they are resolved into elements. For there is none of the sensible elements that is pure, but they are more or less mixed, and apt to be changed one into the other, even as earth becoming dirty and being dissolved becomes water, and the same being made thick and hard becomes earth again, but being evaporated through heat passeth into air and that being kindled passeth into fire, and this being extinguished returns back again into air, but being cooled again after its burning becomes earth or stone or sulfur, and this is manifested by lightning. Plato also was of that opinion that earth was wholly changeable and that the rest of the elements are changed as into this, so into one another successively. But it is the opinion of the subtler sort of philosophers that earth is not changed, but relented and mixed with other elements which do not dissolve it, and that it returns back into itself again. Now every one of the elements hath two special qualities, the former whereof it retains as proper to itself, and the other as a mean, it agrees with that which comes next after it. For fire is hot and dry, earth dry and cold, the water cold and moist, the air moist and hot. And so after this manner the elements, according to two contrary qualities, are contrary one to the other, as fire to water and earth to air. Moreover, the elements are upon another account opposite one to the other, for some are heavy as earth and water, and others are light as air and fire. Wherefore the Stoics call the former passives, but the latter actives. And yet once again Plato distinguisheth them after another manner, and assigns to every one of them three qualities, that is, to the fire brightness, thinness, and motion, but to the earth darkness, thickness, and quietness. And according to these qualities the elements of fire and earth are contrary, but the other elements borrow their qualities from these, so that the air receives two qualities of the fire, thinness and motion, and one of the earth, that is, darkness. In like manner, water receives two qualities of the earth, darkness and thickness, and one of fire, that is, motion. But fire is twice more thin than air, thrice more movable, and four times more bright. And the air is twice more bright, thrice more thin, and four times more movable than water. Wherefore, water is twice more bright than earth, thrice more thin, and four times more movable. As therefore the fire is to the air, so air to the water, and water to the earth. And again as the earth is to the water, so the water to the air, and the air to the fire. And this is the root and foundation of all bodies, natures, virtues, and wonderful works. And he which shall know these qualities of the elements in their mixtures shall easily bring to pass such things that are wonderful and astonishing, and shall be perfect in magic. All right. So, uh, once again, that is uh, Cornelius Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, 
Book 1, Chapter 3, on the four elements, their qualities, and mutual mixtures. So now we open up to discussion. So how is everyone doing today? So um, I'm going to organize these as playlists. So the reason that I jump right into the text is because it's going to be a playlist. So people can treat it like an audiobook and switch through the chapters. I don't want a whole lot of dialogue. They can just go right into the text. And then um, I let people know when we open up for uh, comments or whatever. And by the way, um, all of y'all that are watching can always add your input. Okay, and your input could be added to the video if you would like. Um, so that we're all able to share. Um, but those that want to treat this like a audiobook can just skip. You know, if they want to, they can skip the commentary. So what we have here is um, this shows yet again. Now, this is a book written in the 16th century. This is, these are the three books of occult philosophy by Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. Um, I have a link provided in the description um, to Amazon if, if uh, you don't have a copy and you'd like to buy a copy to follow along in these videos, be sure and buy a copy. Um, my Amazon link has an at hashtag ad. That means that it is a commission link. Um, full disclosure. What we have here is the medieval view of the cosmos really the classical goes back to the classical period to empedocles and all of that okay on on through the middle ages on through the renaissance into the time of agrippa um we they viewed the world in terms of earth air fire and water now there's a fifth element of spirit that is not mentioned here but it doesn't have to be. That's kind of a complicated thing that we don't have to go into right here. Basically, spirit, the fifth element, it is another element, but really it's the source of the four elements and like it transcends the four elements and is like the medium between it's so the medium between them and their source and origin. So it's a little bit different. Okay. But here Agrippa is talking about the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Um, so basically, these refer to the, these are more akin to states of matter than to chemical elements, okay? Um, so we have solid, liquid, and gas. So water here does not mean H2O. Water here refers to any liquid. Uh, in the same way, earth um, refers to any solid Okay, Agrippa goes into this. As we'll see as we go deeper into the text, um, he talks about how the moisture in plants and animals is the water. How the bones of animals or the, um, the wood in plants is, is like the earth of the plants or animals. Or how the breath is the air or, or whatever else. Or the leaves are the air. So basically, and then the heat, animal heat is fire. So we see that it's obviously water does not mean H2O. <laughs> Air does not mean oxygen. These refer to states of matter. But also they are some, have symbolic qualities. Now those of you that are familiar with modern magic, we're all very familiar with the modern view of the elements that air is logic and reason, water is emotions, fire is the passion, Earth is the body and, and material things. We all get that. That's modern magic. Very basic. And we get it in the tarot and all of this. However, it's interesting. That's why Agrippa is interesting. That's why. Because we're going back a few centuries. We're going back about 500 years in occultism. And looking at what Renaissance magic had to say about the four elements. You'll see it's a little bit less psychologized than in modern magic. Uh, post-Golden Dawn, post-Tarot, wands, cups, swords, and, and coins, and, and this idea of, of reason versus emotions, and kind of the psychologizing of magic that happens with the Hermetic Order, the Golden Dawn, and Eliphas Levy. Not saying one is better or worse than the other, 
But in understanding the history of occultism, many occultists aren't even aware that there's another way of looking at the four elements, except through this lens. And that's why I think it's important to just throw out there the classical magical view of the four elements. And we could see that, for example, the correspondences that we tend to take for granted today that east is air, south is fire, west is water, north is earth. Agrippa gives a totally different directions. Totally different. So we realize that these things are kind of like modern solidified developments. Um, but this was not always the way that these things were viewed. So what is this saying here? Obviously it's returning, referring to states of matter. Earth, air, fire, and water. Agrippa says that they also change from one element to the other. By the way, um, y'all feel free, um, if y'all have any thoughts that pop in your minds, uh, feel free to share, um, and I'll read any comments. Word of warning though, if, people, if you do leave a comment, I am going to read it. <laughs> okay, so, um, here we go. So obviously, if the element the elements they change one into e e the other, okay. It says here it talks about. So let me read. Let's go by this uh, paragraph by paragraph. So those of you that missed the reading, we're about to go paragraph by paragraph now. So those of you that are just now tuning in, this is actually the perfect time because we're about to go paragraph by paragraph. We're reading the three books of occult philosophy, Book One, Chapter Three. We're reading about the elements, the four elements, okay, earth, air, fire, and water. This was published in uh, uh, 1531, so this is 16th century. So the first paragraph, okay, again, of the four elements, their qualities and mutual mixtures. This is Agrippa, Book 1, Chapter 3. There are four elements and original grounds of all corporeal things. Fire, earth, water, air, of which all elementated inferior bodies are compounded, not by way of heaping them up together, but by transmutation and union. And when they are destroyed, they are resolved into elements. So uh, here he's talking about uh, corporeal things. That means physical, material things. He's talking about things here because Agrippa has this view of the world that is like, hierarchical and and like um emanationistic like we have our world here and then we these are these outer rings like higher spiritual realities like higher layers of reality till we get to the source so for agrippa he divides it into three worlds we have the material world here and then the next world up we have the um astrological realm and beyond that the divine mind okay so these are the three realms but here below so he's talking about the material world but we need to keep in mind that the four L ele these elements also apply in the zodiac so we need to not forget that also in the renaissance mindset the four elements do apply on the macrocosmic or celestial second level up the second the celestial world or even in the divine name yod he vav he in the, in the divine realm so elements are not just physical things they're also divine elements and it hints at it here because it refers to pure versus compounded elements it says that the sensible elements that we sense that we're aware of here below are of a mixed nature they're imperfect they're impure they're apt to turn one into the other as opposed to the pure element Anyways, that's how I see it. So, again, y'all feel free to jump in. So, I just want to read that part again, um, having the, keeping in mind what was just said. There are four elements and original grounds of all corporeal things. Fire, earth, water, air, of which all elementated inferior bodies are compounded, not by way of heaping them up together, but by transmutation and union. This is important. That's saying that the elements are apt to change one into the other. Earth can turn into uh, water. Solid can melt and turn into a liquid. A liquid could evaporate and turn into a gas. Gas can be ignited and become fire. Um, and through union. Now, once again, 
I am not suggesting that we go back to medieval science, <laughs> literally. Just just for any literalists out there, like for, for us occultists, like this is just obvious. But um, for most of us, this is obvious, like duh. But for many people, um, for somebody that may misinterpret, I'm not saying suggest that we go back to medieval science, y'all. But trying to understand Agrippa's mindset, the four elements, okay? What is this medieval, I mean, this uh, Renaissance mindset? So, they're apt to turn one into each other. Okay, so, and they, okay, there are four elements and original grounds of all corporeal things. Fire, earth, water, air, of which all elementated inferior bodies here below are compounded. Not by way of heaping them up together, but by transmutation and union. And when they are destroyed, they are resolved into elements. For there is none of the sensible elements, like material elements down here in the earthly realm, there is none of the sensible elements that is pure, but they are more or less mixed and apt to be changed one into the other. Even as earth becoming dirty and being dissolved becomes water, and the same being made thick and hard becomes earth again. But being evaporated through heat passeth into air, and that being kindled passeth into fire, and this being extinguished returns back again into air, but being cooled again after its burning becomes earth or stone or sulfur, and this is manifested by lightning. So, um, yep, just basic observation that if you heat up a liquid, it'll evaporate into a gas. Um, that, you know, you could burn earth and it'll give off gas and some of it'll turn into ash or some things will melt and you know, you could freeze water and it becomes solid or, you know, yeah. <clears throat> so people basically, they, they understood. Um, so on to the next paragraph. Plato also was of that opinion that earth was wholly changeable and that the rest of the elements are changed. As into this, so into one another successively. But it is the opinion of the subtler sort of philosophers that earth is not changed, but relented and mixed with the other elements, which do not dissolve it, and that it returns back into itself again. So his basic idea is somehow earth is set apart from the other four elements, okay? It is a thing unto itself, okay? You see a similar idea kind of in the Kabbalah where earth, the element of earth doesn't get a place with the three mother letters. Um... But it's just understood to be like the recipient, the materialization of the higher forces. Okay, next paragraph. Now, every one of the elements hath two special qualities. Now it's going to talk about what are called the four powers. These are heat and cold, moisture and dryness. And interestingly, these were seen as kind of eternal qualities. Whereas the elements were apt to change one into each other, into the other by changing these four qualities. For example, fire is hot and dry, but if you if you make it moist, it becomes air. And air is moist and and hot. If you cool it, then it becomes moist and cold, which is water. So it's showing how the elements can change one into each other by changing up the four, these four qualities. So, keeping in mind what, what I just said, let's read that next paragraph. Now, because we're breaking down Agrippa, okay, for people that want that. So now, every one of the elements hath two special qualities. Remember what I just said here. The former whereof it retains is proper to itself, and the other is a mean. It agrees with that which comes next after it. So, for example, hot and and uh, and dry. For example, as fire, it has two qualities. These two form a con uh, contrariety. They they make the elements distinct one from each other. But since there are two elements, it could have it hasn't one of the el uh, it has a principle within it that serves as a mean, so that one element could be transmuted into another element. So that mean is like a connecting link that makes the elements apt to change one into the other. 
Uh, now every one of the elements hath two special qualities, the former whereof it retains as proper to itself, and the other as a mean, it agrees with that which comes next after it. For fire is hot and dry, earth dry and cold, the water cold and moist, the air moist and hot. And so after this manner the elements, according to two contrary qualities, are contrary one to the other as fire to water, and air, earth to air. Moreover, the elements are upon another account opposite one to the other, for some are heavy as earth and water, and others are light as air and fire. Wherefore the Stoics called the former passives, but the latter actives. Now this is something that the ancients had noticed, that um, fire or heat rises, Fire heat rises, um, whereas earth falls, okay? Uh, so they'll notice that fire rises and earth or solid objects tend to fall because of gravity, we know. Um, and they also notice that if you put earth inside of water, the earth will drop to the bottom and the water will rise to the top. So they saw that earth was more more of a, a denser quality than the water okay so this is just ancient science they saw that earth goes to the bottom next would be water next above that air and then they saw that fire is the principle that moves up most upward so they see that er, at the two extremes are earth and fire and then the two others uh water and air serve as intermediary elements okay as types of means so, going back to the text here, um, and yet, once again, Plato distinguishes them after another manner. So, it's just dividing these up into their different qualities. So, I mean, that's basically all that that is, okay? It's dividing up. So, so this all goes back to show that for Agrippa, magic was just using the world or how he understood science to be magic was just understanding nature and how the universe worked so that you could tweak its laws that is how agrippa looked at magic and that's actually pretty interesting because this is a move away from just pure super superstition or whatever now i'm not uh i actually tend to follow the spirit model so I'm not bad mouthing the spirit model, but this was more uh, a, what Agrippa has here is kind of an approach of looking at this in a, a pseudo scientific lens. Okay, you understand nature and how nature works, and as such, you could utilize the laws of nature to create changes and effects. Okay. Um, and so anyways, this is part of that process. So that's why Agrippa starts off. He starts off this giant tome with talking about the four elements. Because he's like, okay, you want to understand magic? Okay, first of all, we need to understand, like, do you understand, like, basically how the world works? <laughs> that's what he's trying to do. So you understand, like, you heat up a liquid and it evaporates. You know, for some people reading this, that may have been uh, actually, you know, some people that got a hold of Agrippa centuries ago, that might have been, you know, some of this might be new information. So the four elements. The next few chapters are going to go a little deeper into the four elements. So I, um, we're going to go a little deeper here, um, but those are going to be in its own video. So that's just a quick little video. And this was today's reading of the three books of occult philosophy. This was book one, chapter three. And uh, so I'll see y'all in the next video in which we go into chapter four. Once again, I just wanted to thank everyone for stopping in. And uh, we're going to work through all of these chapters here and much more material to come. And uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that on my Patreon, I'm going to be building up a tarot course that's something that's going to be built up over a period of, of time, um, but it's something that uh, I plan to make available to Patreon subscribers, and that is actually something that I'm working on right now. And I'm going to have 
you know, probably once a week or whatever, or however often I'm gonna, or a couple times a week. It's gonna be pretty regular, but I'm gonna have some uh, tarot videos coming out. But that's gonna be for Patreon only. But my point is that it's gonna be a longer term instruction. It's not gonna be something over a period of days. It's gonna be something we're gonna work through the cards bit by bit. So that's something that I plan to work on. Um, so anyways, that is it for today, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.